So I just wanted to go over this tool. It's been giving me a bit of a headache for the last couple days. So quick documentation rundown. You've got this crappy CAD geometry. This tool is to remesh it so you can use it with like a bevel rendering. All right, so that's the functionality. Works fairly fast. Let's just see, recook it. It's pretty quick, couple seconds. All right, so now dive into the actual setup. So the overarching concept is you identify unique planes. So I've removed all the internal edges, so that hole is gone. This is one polygon. And you identify unique planes, so this would be a unique plane. This would be a unique plane. This would be a unique plane. This would be a unique plane, etc. And you cut it, each plane. You cut each unique plane by all other unique planes. So it looks something like this is one unique plane. And this is another unique plane. So you would, first iteration, you would cut by this plane. And then next iteration, you could cut by this plane. So then you start slicing like here. And that's literally just done with a clip soft right here. So all the cutting happens in this last, these last loops right here. And that's actually the fairly simple part. This is the more convoluted stuff all up here. And the reason for all of that it comes from the lovely CAD geometry like this. So CAD geometry can often have, you know, these really small slivers and very small positional inaccuracies. So while this flat plane seems flat, this plane right here seems flat, there might be very, very small coordinate uh, irregularities. So this actually isn't represented as flat when you call like normal, uh, prim normal, when you try to get their service normal. So you need to smooth them first to identify the, the unique planes. So first that's done with this normal soft right here. So this is going to smooth out any of those small irregularities. So if you had like these two polygons and there were slight, the coordinates were slightly malformed. So if you called to try to get the surface normal in VEX with like prim normal, they would, uh, it would be an orders of magnitude even more irregular. So this smooths them out. So it's a pretty low cusp angle because obviously you don't want to smooth out like corners like this. You're just trying to smooth out the smaller regularities between these seemingly flat polygons just to make sure that their normal is unified. So then I'm just splitting them by this tolerance. So I've got a distance and a normal tolerance mainly. So I split them and this gives me just the connected, the disconnected normal pieces. But the goal again is to get an ID that can represent this, for example, as one unique patch, this as one unique plane, sorry, not patch and so on. Here I just store the primitive ID and then I'm doing a for each connected piece and that's going to remove all the internal edges. So that's being done with a silhouette triangulate 2D and then it removes shared edges on the divide and then some cleanup stuff. The only thing special going on here is this, which is storing the original prims that made up the patch. So for example, this was made up of the original prims 268 and 271. So that's being stored on the patch primitive 268, 271 here. And that's used later to test for holes because you need to test the newly divided geometry against the old geometry to see if a prim needs to get removed. Okay, so that's that. Here is the convoluted part. So I'm getting the unique, I'm trying to get the unique planes here. So that's what happens in all of these wrangles. So in the first wrangle, you get, I get the, um, I have this array of dictionaries where each dictionary represents similar um, normal facing polygons. So the key is the polygon or the prim number and the value is the normal. So you can see all these normals are, sim are similar again within this tolerance. And this is important to note, very important. This is a signed, this normal has been signed to the origin. 
not based on the winding order. And that's important because say for example, I've got these, these three primitives here. This primitive faces up, this polygon, sorry, polygon, this polygon faces up as well. And then this polygon faces down, however, but they are on the same plane. But that doesn't really matter when all you're trying to do is slice. What does matter is their, orient, uh, their orientation to the origin. And this is important when you're calculating distance. So if you're using absolute distance and not properly signed normals, you could have a mirrored version of that plane since it's absolute distance. But by signing the normal to the origin, you make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, and then you also ensure that you group all of these polygons, even though they have different uh, surface normals, you group them on the same plane. Okay, so a bit convoluted already. And then here, I'm just averaging all of those into this array on the detail as well. So taking average all of these into one normal, average all these into one normal, average all these into one normal. And then now I'm getting the distance, which is needed to define the unique planes. And here I'm also storing the normal ID on the prim number. So that's the index into these, into this normal. And I do the same with the distance. So distance ID is the index into the distances array. So here, this is just getting the distance using plane point distance. Um, pretty simple. And then putting it all together, this is where the actual planes, uh, the unique planes get their IDs. So at the end of this, you can see there is this plane ID right here. And if I color based on that, you can see these two have been grouped together properly. And those three have been have the same plane ID. Perfect. So if I if actually I can demonstrate this, if I was to remove the signing of this normal, you can see these would have different plane IDs, right? Because they have different uh, surface normals. So just want to make sure that they're signed. All right. And after that, another really important step here is flattening uh, all of the patches, all of these polygons, flattening them to their unique plane. So the unique plane was calculated by first um, smoothing out some of those smaller regularities. But the original positions on the borders here still remain and could be theoretically slightly off, although it's unlikely they could the, the border of these primitives could be slightly off. So this just iteratively goes through and flattens all of the positions to their unique plane. So you can see there will be a, a very, very slight difference in the coordinates here. That's just to ensure that the geometry lines up with the normal planes. For example, if you went and did this cut, this clip right here, but the positions were slightly off, you would get like really bad slivers and artifacts. So this just makes sure the geometry actually lines up with these values here of the normals. Okay. And then here the actual cutting happens. So the outer loop, as I just went over earlier, you um, for every unique plane is being gone over on this outer loop. So get one piece and then for every other piece. So every piece except that's not the current one. You slice it by that to get this. And then here you just skip anything with the same normal since they'll never intersect or they're on the same plane. And then just some more cleanup down here. Um, and then here is that hole testing. So obviously there's no holes in this part of the mesh, but that's done by bringing in the original mesh and then removing any primitives that are not part of the original prim of that patch. So what was done up here. Okay, and then that outputs this with the hole preserved. And so I went over the no normal tolerance. It's also the distance tolerance is also really important. So for example, this uh, hole right here is about a little over a centimeter. So this needs to this cannot be bigger 
then you're a uh, bit equal to or larger, sorry, equal to or larger than yeah, the smallest opening. Otherwise, these planes would get merged. So this needs to stay small, but the normal tolerance is quite a bit larger, you can see. All right, so that's all.